Hey, Vinyl Community, it's Robert Fithin, and uh, tonight I want to talk about double live albums. So just one question. Are you ready to rock? I can't hear you! No, I actually can't hear you. That's, uh, that's how YouTube works. Thankfully, though, you can hear me, and tonight I want to talk about double live albums. I got the idea to do this from seeing the uh, Record Store Day 2020 list that was just released and seeing all of the different live things, and, you know, it's just kind of random live concerts all the time now. That they're releasing and it reminded me of the days when you didn't have just random concerts you had the artist had their double live album that was it that was how they were represented in concert on record and tape and that's what you went with and if you really like the artist you may have got it it usually you know it's a double album so it usually cost more and so it was really for the fans and uh you know you'd see people performing on tv every once in a while you know, Midnight Special and Solid Gold or whatever, but you really didn't get to see full concerts on TV. That came later. You know, it was sporadic. It was really sporadic. And um, so really, you know, you either went to the concert or you had the live album. That was it. And there was, like I said, there was usually one definitive live album per artist. So I just grabbed a whole bunch of these and... Uh, I grabbed way too many. I couldn't stop. I'm like, well, I got to do this one. I got to do this one. So we start off at the beginning, um, basically, uh, 1971 with the Allman Brothers um, at Fillmore East. Uh, this is uh, obviously a classic. Uh, I don't have the uh, gatefold. This is a later pressing, which is just a single, but it does have both records in here, one of which features uh, You Don't Love Me, and one, and one side features Whipping Post. You know, and the other side has uh, like two songs. So there's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven songs on here, two records because it's the Allman Brothers band. You wouldn't have it any other way. So a lot of long jams, a lot of jazzy kind of rhythms mixed in, classic rock, southern rock. Just I mean, brilliance right here. Great way to start this. 1971, one of the first definitive live albums from the Allman Brothers band uh, at Fillmore East. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings uh, over America. A uh, double live album that has uh, definitely improved uh, by being digitized on CD. Not, not just because of the digital, but because it was reimagined, it was remastered, they went back in. For whatever reason, some of these 70s uh, albums didn't sound that good. Uh, live albums. Uh, for whatever reason. And they were able to go back years later and really pull those instruments out, bring out that clarity and wings across America is uh, definitely one example of that. If you listen to the actual original vinyl, it does sound a little murky. It sounds kind of just like really flat. A lot of like heavy audience, just kind of just, uh, you know, it, it it was a big album, but it really, uh, maybe I'm amazed actually, was uh, the, the version you usually hear on the radio, at least uh, in uh, the US, is usually the live version that comes from this. So this did produce a hit single. Wings Over America from 1977, 76, somewhere around there. Another great definitive, you know, that was the Paul McCartney live album. Long before Paul is Dead and all that, uh, Tripping the Live Fantastic came out. That's what I'm really concentrating on tonight is, is basically those definitive live albums that were out in the 70s and early to mid 80s, where it was like, that was the one they had. Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same, is not truly a live album. It's the soundtrack to the movie, uh, which Led Zeppelin, one of those rare groups where you could go to the movie and watch a concert. So there was another way besides a double live album to appreciate a concert, besides being there. Uh, comes with a little booklet in here that uh, really makes some great use of space, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> maybe they could have made these pictures a little bigger, uh, and, man, or not, whatever. But this has been panned for years. This is not Led Zeppelin at their best. This is, uh, like I said, what they were able to capture just the two nights they were filming in, uh, I think it was 73. This came out in 76. Uh, notorious for having the sidelong Dazed and Confused, which is actually different. They do different songs in the middle. I don't remember what they go into, but they go into like different songs. So it's not all uh, Dazed and Confused. I really like the version of uh, Rock and Roll on here. The very first, that's the first song. Celebration Day is pretty good on here. Stairway to Heaven, uh, the familiar line, what is that? Does anybody remember Laughter? Yeah, that's on here. And uh, so, drum solo, Moby Dick, half a side for that. Led Zeppelin song <laughs> remains the same. Here we go, Kiss Alive. Uh, huge, obviously, double live album. 
Uh, here's where we kind of take a split and one side kind of says one thing and one side says the other. This is notorious for being mostly a studio production with uh, just the drums and the audience being from the actual concerts. So everything else pretty much overdubbed from what I've read. And this is kind of where you get a split. There's people who say um, it's it doesn't matter. What matters is when I put this album on, it rocks. When you put an album on, it rocks. Or it's <clears throat> brilliant, or it's wonderful, or I love it, or you know whatever is happening. And there's other people that say, no, this should be a document of a Kiss concert. This should be authentic. This should be... You know, you shouldn't have all this overdubbing. That's not a that's not lie. They should call it something else then. So you really have the difference of people who say, well, art is art and you should be able to do whatever you want. And the people who say, I want some authenticity. I want to hear what the concert sounds like. So this is Kiss uh, redoing all their songs <laughs> with an audience and Peter Chris uh, at the concert. And that led to a live too, which is the same thing. Uh, I love this. This has always been my favorite Kiss color scheme here. Um... But, uh, by the way, I grew up with this. This is probably my first double live album. Uh, yeah, the the 100,000 Years drum solo. And uh, this really kind of kicks at the, the side one of this, especially. Uh, and rock and roll all night, the live version that you hear all the time on the radio comes from this, too. Uh, but uh, Kiss Alive 2, not as popular as the first Alive. Basically, just like, hey, look how well that sold. Let's do it again with our new songs and put a bunch of uh, new studio tracks on side four. So you have those live albums where it's, you know, they they do this the album and a half of live, and then the side four is the singles, or they'll mix in the new the new tunes, or whatever new studio tracks. But uh, they do the Dave Clark Five on here. <laughs> I always love that Rocket Ride. I think has a great guitar riff. Always like that um, Rocket in the USA and whatever. But uh, yeah, the uh, the live tracks on here sound really just right there in your face if you crank them up it's like you know vu overload um similar to alive you know if you love alive you'll love alive too i'm probably telling you nothing that you don't already know uh leonard skinner one more from or for the road uh yeah leonard skinner i would i i never really cared for this i love leonard skinner you know this era but um they don't really capture you know i've heard them live in other you know, like uh, videos or whatever, DVDs, uh, other concerts that are, you know, broadcast or bootlegged or whatever, and they sound terrific. This one doesn't really capture it for me anyway. I, I was kind of disappointed, and then, I and then I'll hear it again going, you know, it's Leonard Skinner, though. It's got to be great, right? And let's do it again a couple of years later, same thing. Let's do it again. There's some couple of tracks on here that are pretty good, but uh, for the most part, the studio tracks uh, blow this away every time. So I really wish uh, this this would have been better. I, I, I love, like I said, love Leonard Skinner uh, from the 70s. Uh, but I really wish uh, they had a better, I don't know if it's the recording or, or did it caught him on a kind of off night or what. Uh, ooh, another one. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Love Tom Petty. Not a big fan of this one. This came out in 1985. And that's another thing about uh, live albums when it's like, this is the Tom Petty live album. Sometimes it'll catch an artist at a point where they're doing something different or trying kind of a different thing. And um, it's not like it's not like their main sound. So it kind of sounds a little strange. This caught him in the middle. Of, this is 1985. And he's doing that Southern Accents album where it's kind of jazzy. It's it's a jazzy Tom Petty with like horns and stuff. Don't Come Around Here No More was the single, but there's n no other song on that album that sounds like that. Most of them were this jazzy kind of, you know, Sting was doing that. Huey Lewis started doing it. Everybody was doing the jazz thing in, in 85, 86. And so this is the tour that that's from. So you hear a bunch of horns and it's like, really? Um, so, yeah, I do love uh, their version of The Birds, So You Want to Be a Rock and Roll Star, which is, uh, this is the album that's from. And then they had the live versions of The Waiting and uh, Refugee and uh, I Need to Know. American Girl is on here. The best is Breakdown, where the whole audience takes over for a verse. Actually, I, I like this better than I'm remembering <laughs> now that I think about it. I just wish it was a different era of Tom Petty where he wasn't doing the uh, the jazz stuff. But how can you how can you go wrong with Tom Petty live? Uh, Aerosmith live bootleg. This is a real deal. This is not a bootleg, but it's... 
they called it live bootleg to salute all the live bootlegs that were out. Whole other thing that we could talk about is live bootleg. That, that's probably a different video. But, you know, the coffee stains are uh, on the actual album, and you have the... Uh, this is actually a great uh, inner, inner... This is the way a gatefold... Live gatefold should do this, right here. That's a live gatefold. All kinds of pictures from the concert, because this is all pre-internet. You're not going to go on... This is the only time you're going to see this stuff, or unless you get Cream Magazine or Hip Parader or whatever, whatever those were. Um, God, Cream Magazine. Uh, so, yeah... Great center, a lot better than some of these other ones. A lot better than that Led Zeppelin thing. But uh, people don't like this. I like this. I like this a lot. I, I think uh, Steve Tyler's uh, vocals, a little in and out sometimes, but it's Aerosmith. You kind of want them to be coked out and <laughs> just kind of like, you know. That's my favorite Aerosmith, sorry. But uh, they do uh, a segment on this where it's from a radio station where they're just jamming out in this radio station, I think 1974. I mean, it's pretty early on. And that's my favorite part of it. It's just kind of like them jamming out, doing like James Brown songs and stuff like that. So th this is kind of all over the place, just like a bootleg would be. Um, it, it's a big stadium, you know, concert type thing. And then it goes into the radio thing. Then it goes into like a, a sound rehearsal thing. So, oh my God, I'll save that one. Okay, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Four-Way Street, like the Allman Brothers, one of the early, uh, when, you know, the double album concept thing here. Um, just the guys hanging out backstage, and a uh, nice photo of those guys. You'll notice there's no, there's no track listing on here anywhere. Um, that's probably good, because if I, like, I really like the song Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, so if I saw that on here, and that was what, put me over the top and said, you know, I'm going to actually buy this double album, pay a little more because I like a lot of the Crosby, Stills and Nash, but it does have Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. That's my favorite. I'm going to buy this. And then I got home and found out that Sweet Judy Blue Eyes on here is 24 seconds long. I'd be pretty upset. So it's probably good that they don't have the, the song titles. <laughs> yeah, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. 24 seconds on Four Way Street. But uh, what else is on here? So many great... It's Crosby. It's them and, the, you know, they've really only got like two albums out at this point so it's basically the songs from those first two teacher children and Guinevere's probably on there all those great ones now here's a here's another example of a of a soundtrack but I wanted to show this because this is like the rare double album uh with different artists uh it's actually the soundtrack to Erg A Music War uh it came out in the early 80s has all of these great new wave I mean maybe you've seen the movie the movie's you know incredible but um, back then, you know, you couldn't just go in your house and watch the movie. I mean, maybe you could if you were super wealthy or whatever, but most people didn't have VCRs and things like that in 1981, 82. Those didn't come along, we didn't have one until 88, but, uh, <laughs> those came along more like 84, 85. So you, you got the soundtrack, you remember the movie, and you got the Go-Go's on here, you got Oingo Boingo, The Police, Devo, Echo and the Bunnymen, The Cramps. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts with Bad Reputation. Uh, Flesh Tones are on here. Gang of Four is on here. Uh, magazines, like I said, all of those great... Some of them were around for like one year. Some of them were around for three years, but we still remember them like the Go-Go's. And then uh, you have people like Klaus Nomi, who for some reason, whenever they show a clip of the movie, that's that's who they always show. The guy with the, you know, the German white face with the lips and the... Bow tie guy, yeah. So this is uh, this is pretty incredible, uh, and never gets boring because if you don't like what you're hearing, the next thing is completely different. So rare, various artist, a double live album. This would have been cool if they would have somehow made a. Oh, this does have a nice uh, inner sleeve though, so you do get to see the artists on the uh, inner sleeve, at least at what their album covers look like. But that would have been cool to have a nice gatefold on that to open up. Another example of a various artist uh, live is the soundtrack to Watt Stacks. And this has all of the Stacks uh, roster up at the time. This is when they were uh, performing, trying to do a lot of things to make money for the company because it was facing going out of business, bankruptcy, a whole thing with Atlantic Records uh, basically ripping them off and uh, you know causing Stacks to lose their entire uh, library. So all these people getting together trying to do whatever. And uh, played there, and you got uh, 
But this is another where it's the movie, and then this is basically the soundtrack to the movie, but you have the staple singers, you have Eddie Floyd, you have Albert King. Uh, the Barquets on here with the... The Barquets is, is the... Uh, um, uh, I guess the version of that group, because there's several incarnations, uh, where it has the guy with the huge silver uh, afro. So that's another thing. You know, you see this movie advertised, that's what they're going to show. They're going to show that guy. The Isaac Hayes pulling his thing off, revealing his bald head, and the whole audience goes nuts. Whole audience goes nuts, starts storming the place at one point, and it's Rufus Thomas that comes out and does the funky chicken and, uh, you know, saves the day. So Watt Stacks. A lot of great stuff on there. A lot of uh, people on here that I didn't mention that are uh, the Soul Children's one, but uh, that, you know, aren't huge stars either. Oh, my God. Yes songs. A Yes live album. Yes. Yes, because they got to they gotta fold out and out again. Yeah, this is a triple album, actually. This isn't a double album. I wasn't going to do triple albums. There's triple albums like the Bangladesh and the... Grateful Dead and stuff I didn't get out because I wasn't going to do triple albums, and here I am with Yes songs. Tell you what, make it quick, because uh, this really doesn't qualify. It's not a double album. Um, Insomnia, throw it on. Sleep in 10 minutes. Grand Funk live album. Another early one. Uh, <laughs> this is this is loud and just, uh, when it first comes on, it's such got such a raw sound. You're like, is the whole album going to sound like this? They do kind of tweak it a little bit about a minute in. But, man, this is just, if you want your stuff, I don't think any overdubs on this. I don't know what they would have. I mean, Grand Funk Live Album. If you want the real deal shoved right in your face, this is uh, this is how to do that. This is the, the dude stops the concert. It's like, I just want to let everybody know, man, there's people out there that look like you, people like me. They're not your friends, man. And if they hand you something, don't take it, man. Don't take it. Scorpions. Tokyo Tapes. Um, this is, I think, a German pressing of this, maybe. I don't know. From somewhere. Uh, yeah, uh, Scorpions have uh, this one and Worldwide Live, which is their uh, 85 one. But this is some early Scorpions. And, uh, yeah, Scorpions with uh, the high heel boot on. Uh, yeah, so the this is their early stuff, like Steam Rock Fever, Dark Ladies on here. Does this have Speedy's Coming? Speedy's Coming's on here. That's, like, the best. I love that song. Uh, we'll build this, uh, burn the skies on here, so. A lot of great early Scorpions on here. Um, quality is decent. What the hell's going on in that cover? Quality is, uh, decent. Um, again, studio versions. Probably preferred. And here's the Grateful Dead that we were just speaking of. Now, this, I believe is another uh, triple album. Now, come on. Can we do a little better than that? That's the cup. No wonder I never opened this. Anyway, uh, Grateful Dead, uh, Europe 72. Grateful Dead has so many. I mean, come on. You could do a whole video channel on... There are video channels. What am I talking about? On uh, Grateful Dead... Um, Live stuff. I, I just this, but uh, this one is one of my favorites. Um, Europe seventy two is an early one, and uh, this was back when uh, you know you could actually Grateful Dead's never really been one for definitive albums. Like these are the Grateful Dead albums, and these are boot. I mean, it's all kind of just kind of mismatched here in this wonderful just like array of Grateful Dead sounds. So I mean, you can't really say I mean, they were one of those groups that really didn't have that definitive. Here's their uh, live album. Uh, we go from the Grateful Dead to Duran Duran. This isn't a double either. I got a bunch of rule breakers here. This is single, but it's gateful. Um, this is pretty bad. This is uh, this is the fake live album you do when you when you don't even care enough to have an audience in it. You don't even care enough to expose the fact that this is obviously a studio creation. You don't even put the audience in. The audience is barely heard in this for like the first song, and then the rest of it, there's no audience. It's like and and it's totally like just alternate versions of Duran Duran songs. And the studio versions are better on pretty much every single one of these. And uh, The Wild Boys is uh, um, not live, or not, not pretending to be live. It is the, uh, the hit version. That's, this is the album where, where from that song comes. Little Feet. Nice. Waiting for Columbus. Um, 
Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of like the the funkier side of southern rock, and this is a album is one of those ones where the vinyl beats the CD because when the CD came out, they had to take like two songs off of it so they could still have a uh, a single disc and keep the price down. And you could have a whole uh, video on that, you know, al double albums that ended up with songs cut off of them because they wanted to make a single disc. Prince 1999 originally liked that, by the way. Uh, Waiting for Columbus from Little Feet. This is a later pressing. But this is one of those funky albums. It doesn't. I don't remember a lot of standouts on this. Like, oh my God, you gotta hear this track. But this is one of those ones that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of cool all the way through. Uh, not blowing anybody away. It didn't blow me away. I don't really remember a lot of it. But I remember this being a decent listen and uh, something that I want, would definitely want to hear again. It's just been a while since I've heard that. I remember they had uh, the Dixie Chicken on here. Um, the studio it doesn't have Dixie Chicken. Never mind. Yes, it does. Dixie Chicken, I definitely prefer the, the studio. Golden Earring Live. Um, they have two hits here in America, and this has one of them, uh, Radar Love. Um, does not have Twilight Zone too early for that, but, uh, this is, uh, <coughs> this is an example of how, you know, this came out in America, so they're expecting Americans to purchase this, and, uh, really all we know is Radar Love, so even somebody with basically one song can still have a double album distributed here in the United States. Here's Loggins and Messina. On the stage, I have heard this a couple of times. I don't really remember a lot about it. Uh, it is Kenny Loggins and, and uh, Messina <laughs> on stage, apparently, in San Francisco, uh, New York, and Boston. The thing I know about this, though, is this. Look at that spine. You can see if somebody has this in their collection from 25 paces. Look at that. That is one of the most definitive... Again, another idea for a video. Definitive record spines. Because you can see that. Loggins, if you see this, well, this is what it is. Loggins and Messina, right there on that stage doing Corner of Pooh House or whatever. Oh, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. We're going to have some more. Uh, Live Bullet, another early uh, one. If you're expecting to hear like Night Moves and Old Time Rock and Roll and uh, all those hits from later on, you want this one. Nine Tonight, it's got all the hits. This one's too early for that. This has got an incredible, again, <clears throat> CD versus vinyl. Check it out. This is Bob Seger, Double Live, Nine Tonight. This came out in 1981. Killer version of Let It Rock ends this album. I, I, I just love that his version of Let It Rock on here. CD comes out. They cut down the song on the CD to make it just a single CD. Okay, years later, they remaster the CD. Now CDs are 80 minutes long, so they put the whole Let It Rock on there. They don't do that. They keep the edited version on there and throw some bonus track on. Okay, so the, another reason why this. This is 90 Night. This is the one with the hits, you know, Hollywood Nights, Old Time Rock and Roll, Her Strut, uh, Night Moves, uh, Rock and Roll Never Forgets. Uh, they're all on here. This one, though, came out earlier, and this just rocks. This is one of the first live albums I ever heard. And uh, this has uh, Traveling Man and Beautiful Loser, the version, that, at least here in the Midwest, that that's where this comes from. They also play the live version of Catman, do a lot on the radio, and uh, Turn the Page, huge. If this is the live version, that's what this is from. So uh, early Bob Seger grew up with this on an eight track. And uh, yeah, just great all the way through. A little bit of a dip in, you know, side two, but... Incredible. Love it. A lot of energy. Sounds live. That's a lot of it sounds live. So I don't know if there's a lot of overdubs on that. I could be wrong. Oh, speaking of first, this is the first live album I ever heard. Uh, Elvis Presley. Aloha from Hawaii. Via satellite. And uh, yeah, just uh, the, the 1973 version of Elvis. Um, you know, with the rhinestones and the white jumpsuit. This has a nice trick cover here where you pull Elvis out and you reveal, you know. It's really just an advertisement for another live album. But this is the double live album. He has several, several live albums. Uh, and uh, this was the first uh, live album I ever heard. This is, you know, it's his kind of show glitzy versions of some of his older songs. He just kind of blows through them on side two with this kind of medley uh, a lot of Vegas type stuff on here. You gave me a mountain is on here. What now, my love? Uh, 
C.C. Ryder, you know, that kind of stuff. It's it's that era of Elvis. I'm sure I'm either talking to somebody who doesn't care about Elvis or somebody who's already who already knows all about this. So there's no in-between. Elvis. Aloha from Hawaii. This is uh, another classic, classic live album. Uh, Peter Frampton comes alive. So, yeah. I think everybody had, I think that everybody had this at one point or another. I don't know how far we are into this video, by the way. This is a lot, a lot. You know, this is a double length video for a double length album. Just had to make sure that I didn't run out of battery or something. Frampton comes alive. So, uh, you know, again, this, the, when they have uh, songs that are actually on the radio from the live album that are hit singles, you know the live album's got to be pretty good. This is a classic with Show Me The Way and uh, Do You Feel like I do, and uh, Baby I Love Your Way, those are all from Frampton Comes Alive. And a lot of great other songs on here, too. I'm not a huge Peter Frampton fan, but, uh, you know, I, you don't usually recommend a live album, you know, for somebody to start off with. But if you're like, huh, what's this Peter Frampton guy all about? I would start off with this one. Okay, Tina Turner. Live. This is late. This is 88. This has uh, got a great booklet in it. <clears throat> very colorful. Very nice. Uh, they had to do something because live albums at this point are becoming irrelevant. And that's what I was going to kind of talk about um, uh, doing this video and only featuring the definitive classic double albums of the 70s and early to mid 80s, even though this is later 80s. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so... Live albums at this point really started to become irrelevant because you could rent videos or buy videos. And then when DVDs came out, it was like, well, now you even have the great sound and the great, you know, all of that. Why do I need uh, live albums? And they and they just, they didn't have the same meaning that they did. And, and uh, so, but yeah, this is great. This is Tina Turner, uh, you know, at the height of her popularity. She's got a string of hits on here that are most, you know, the 80s stuff. I'm sure Proud Mary's a part of this somewhere, too. But very energetic uh, and just uh, nonstop. She does a version of Addicted to Love uh, and just keeps the energy up all the way through. Very uh, fun. But again, it's Tina Turner. It's 1988. Don't you want to see the DVD instead? I'd rather sit down and watch the, watch the concert rather than just hear it. Now, here is a definitive con uh, album right here. This is like the opposite of the Duran Duran one. This is Willie and Family Live. Willie Nelson and the people he's been touring with for centuries. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Paul there just recently passed away. Uh, but, yeah. This is, uh, this is as raw and as real and as... Uh, kind of unscripted sounding as it got back in the mid 70s uh you know live album it just sounds like you're just sitting right there and it's it could be an auditorium it could be a campfire it wouldn't matter it sounds the same you know um not a lot of country people came out with double albums uh usually if they had a live album it was uh, a single live album bar mandrell live or you know hank williams jr live or whatever they're all single albums Willie Nelson's always the exception, though, and I love this. This is incredible. This is one of those ones where I was just saying about the uh, Peter Frampton, where if, if no one had ever heard of Willie Nelson and didn't really know, this would be actually one of the first albums I'd recommend because Willie Nelson Live is is like the Grateful Dead Live, uh, somebody like that, where, you know, Fish Live, it's, it's the definitive version, is the live version. And speaking of definitive versions, this is where... Uh, Whiskey River comes from, by the way. When you hear the live, it's usually from that. Uh, Queen, Live Killers. Another uh, example of uh, similar to uh, Wings Over America, where uh, the original uh, album doesn't sound great, sounds okay. They were able to fix and correct things and then later uh, release that on CD. It sounds a little bit better. Hopefully they'll release those on uh, LP. They haven't done that already, those uh, later mixes that's that kind of bring up the brightness a little bit. But this is, uh, people don't like this one either. I've read a lot of bad reviews on this and, and whatever. I don't, I don't get it. It's not like blowing me away and there's better Queen Live performance footage that comes, you can get later. But again, this is the definitive Live Queen album until 
probably uh, 90, I would say, when that Wembley 86 thing came out, 92. This is what you had, uh, and uh, it's got all the hits. Um, well, all the hits up until 79, that is. But uh, I love the Bohemian Rhapsody on here is great. Uh, his interaction with the audience is exactly what you expect with the oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, all that's on here. All part of that great uh, Queen show. So I don't get the hate for this, but again, not not phenomenal, but certainly not bad. Queen, live killers. <clears throat> Cheap trick. At Budokan, a single disc, but I got this on purpose. I didn't make a mistake and get this out. Uh, it should be a double. <laughs> you know, it seems like it's a double. Uh, but it's not. It's a single. And uh, they they uh, released later um, a fuller version of this with other songs from the concert. And that's great. They could have just done that to begin with and had a great double album. This album, uh, the grooves on this are so tight because they basically tried to fit like 50 or so minutes of music on here or more. And so, yeah, I got to say the CD is the way to go on this one. Um, you don't get this with the CD, though. This nice... Uh, Nice booklet for the uh, At Budokan uh, LP release. So, but yeah, <clears throat> as far as sound quality goes, they did try to put a lot of uh, a lot of time on a, a record there, and you know what happens. The grooves get really tight, sound quality gets diminished. So, Cheap Trick At Budokan, not a double live LP, should have been a double live LP. This is, though... Ted Nugent, Double Live, Gonzos. Okay, this is the, uh, um, I think this is probably what killed <laughs> the Double Live album right here. This was, this is why this is the last one. Bruce Springsteen, box set, Live 75 to 85. Uh, what is this, five records on here? Five records. I'd never heard of a box set before. I knew there was things like, you know, the Reader's Digest box sets and the easy listening stuff. But I, I'd never known of an artist to come out with something like this before. So this was mind-blowing to me. Box sets are freaking everywhere now. But back then, this was like a big deal. Like, are, are you serious? This is like a five-record brand new release? And after this, who wants to put out a measly double live album? I don't remember any after this that were like the Depe Depeche Mode 101, maybe? The, the just definitive blockbuster live double albums. So for the most part, this one killed it. Bruce Springsteen comes along and does everything bigger and longer and goes on and on and on. Yeah, five LPs, a live Bruce Springsteen putting the double live album to rest. So I think we covered just about everything about double live albums. I mean, we talked about how some live albums are just three sides live and uh, one side of studio recordings. We talked about how some live albums don't really sound that good when they came out for whatever reason. They were able to improve that sound uh, later on with remastering. We talked about how some live albums are a little more live than others. We talked about how some bands are definitive or better live. You know, that's some of their definitive work is on live albums like Grateful Dead and uh, Willie Nelson. So if you've got any more uh, great live albums, here's a few uh, CDs I wanted to throw out there. Uh, I don't have everything, so that's why I didn't mention I don't have uh, Thin Lizzy uh, Live and Dangerous. I don't have uh, Bob Marley Live. I don't have... Uh, I don't have Black Sabbath live at last. You know, I mean, there's a lot of live stuff I don't have. And Scorpions, we talked about that. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Randy Rhodes tribute. Not too bad. This is a live version of Crazy Train was played. Video was made for that. It was played a lot. The Doors. Take everything live that you have released at the time and put it on three CDs in a box. Okay, I'll buy it. The Doors in concert. This is like the a live she cried and live at the Hollywood Bowl and whatever that other one is. All on the. All on the same uh, release there. Rush, exit stage left, uh, show of hands. Man, the, the live Rush, the drum solos, the uh, the fact that the three guys were doing all of that is just... You listen to that live album, you're, you're, it's more like... <laughs> you know, that's the face for the Rush uh, live albums. Like, I can't even believe this. Rattling Home, kind of like the hybrid live album soundtrack. Some studios, it's just kind of a mismatch. Rattling Home there, of course, they've got the great... You know, the EP. and the, Well, we won't get into that. We're sticking to doubles. So I don't know why I have this. That's not a double. 
Uh, Live Rust, Neil Young. Great, excellent, awesome. Um, half of it acoustic, half of it uh, rockin'. Right after the uh, Rust Never Sleeps album came out, and I actually prefer these versions on here of things like Cinnamon Girl is great on here. Uh, Sugar Mountain is great on here. I'm a Child is great on here. Needle of the Damage done. Uh, awesome. I would pick this up if you're a Neil Young fan. You've never heard Live Rust. If you've only ever heard like Weld. Not a big fan of this one. It's okay. This is like, if you hear this and this, it's like the difference between 70s live and 90s live. Where 90s live is like trying to sound like you're in the middle of a airport hangar or something and it's just that's my that's my impression that's my impression or whatever of a 90s live release like van halen right here right now where everything is just so like blowing you away uh rolling stones love you live i believe this was their first double live lp right and uh got live if you want it and get your yayas out and then this was after that yeah so love you live uh, goes from big stadium to blues club, you know, they've got different things going on here, depending on what side you're playing. But yeah, this is a double rolling stones, uh, deep purple. Oh, I got this because this is, uh, this is uh live in Japan's in here somewhere. This is that box that I was talking about earlier. It just such reductionism, uh, live in Japan on a little, little cardboard. Isn't that cute? Little cardboard box. With the 22 minute version of Space Trucking on there. And remember this? When Pearl Jam uh, put out like live releases for like every show of the tour. This is the St. Louis one because that's the one I went to. But uh, yeah, they had like, I don't know how many of these. We had a sheet uh, that uh, we got that had uh, all of them listed, you know, didn't have track listings or whatever, it just had all of the shows that, you know, and then the CD number or whatever. I mean, this is like, I don't know, 40 of these or more, I don't know, but that was wild. When was this? 2000. Yeah, Pearl Jam did this for every show that they played on the tour, made a CD out of it. Now, you know, you start getting diminishing returns. You go from the artist, this is their definitive document of their concert, this live album to like we're just going to throw out a cd for every I, I i'm going to go out on a limb and say there's no uh overdubs on here this is this is probably live yeah i don't think a lot of uh a lot of overdub and production work went into those but um thanks again for watching and uh hope you enjoyed my video on double live albums if you've got any live albums double live because i know i left off a lot of live albums because I just did the double live albums. But if you can think of any double live albums that I might have missed, like UFO Strangers in the Night, perhaps, or something like that, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments section. Uh, remember, we were focusing on 70s and uh, early to mid 80s uh, definitive double live albums. So but please subscribe if you haven't. If you enjoy this video, you may enjoy my others, especially the one where I talk about uh, records I passed on. People seem to like that one. Uh, so thanks again for watching.